Where's the VS Code at? Oh. Uh... I don't like VS Code. I don't know why Microsoft has to just like swoop in and they say, hey, we're going to stick our anti-competitive wieners into this stuff. They screw so many other companies in the process. They want to play this card where they're like, hey, we're helping developers out with this tool called VS Code that they spend a ton of money maintaining, I'm sure. But the problem is now you get all these people saying, oh, I just use VS Code for free. If they were looking to compete in the market, do you know what they would do? They would make it fair. They would, it would be 80 bucks or a subscription. Anybody in here could make their own, their own code editor. It'd take a while, but you could do it. Not anymore. This is the kind of garbage that like will, will likely end them up in court. This is very anti-competitive. All because of this word right here. Free. Imagine if you're an artist, you need a place to buy the things you need to make art. You walk into an art store, you know, the kind of place. It smells like patchouli. There's a beanbag in the corner where some weirdo is pretending to read an old book. People working there, they either have tattoos and inappropriate face piercings, or they look like they could be giving a lecture on particle physics at the local community college. But there you are. You're looking for some kind of a kit so you can do your job. You're looking for something with a set of pens, some rulers, and a bundle of paper. Everything you need to create art professionally. So you're looking at that shelf and there's a bunch of options. The stuff is arranged from low end to high or professional end. The pricing sort of represents the quality. So let's just say on the low end, it's five bucks and on the high end, it's 500. There's even some weird guy standing in the aisle who will give you their homemade hand-me-down kit for free. Just so long as you agree to him texting you every so often to ask you for money. Now you're looking at the price tags and somehow magically, one of the tools at the very high end is free dollars, totally free. How are you not going to pick that? How is that fair to the other products? These products all had to be designed, developed, and brought to market. There's real costs associated with them being in the world. In what reality can someone just afford to give away that high-end one? You question things that you pay for. You seek out alternatives. You make informed decisions and switch to other things based on features, capabilities, or cost. Cost being a huge factor. And here's this one art kit saying, Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, you just take it. Just take it. Uh, you, of course you're going to give it a shot over something that was even just $5. And definitely over that one weird guy wanting you to upvote his Twitter account. And I get it. VS Code is open source. Well, in reality, it's Massive Corp open source. It might be free, but it's something that they're throwing a lot of resources into. And it being open source just means that we can easily get an idea of how many of their people are working on this product. And I'm almost certain that they're using open source as a defense so they can look like the good guys when they end up in court trying to explain how they control an entire market. It's a world domination, big corporation, villain play all day. Sure, you might say, <laughs> hey man, well, software doesn't have any costs. Oh yeah, it does, utopian commune-dwelling flower child. Maybe if we lived in free world Landia, where nothing costs anything, we could feasibly have free products. But in the real world, there's tangible costs to just about everything. When you build a product, there's the people coming up with the idea, the planning, the research to make sure you're not doing anything stupid, then the designers and the developers to bring the idea into reality. On top of all of that, you have marketing, HR and management to make sure everything runs smoothly. Everybody doing those things has to be paid and marketing takes a bunch of cash on a new launch. The only difference in manufacturing is actually making a physical thing, which to be frank, doesn't really cost that much when compared to the big picture. And to think software can or should be free is ludicrous. Does this make any sense to you? Like, do you really think they're doing it for the love of the game or for some other benevolent purposes? Do you think they just want people to think, oh man, look at how generous and awesome this massive company is? No way. There's an ulterior motive. They're pouring tons of money into their project and whether they acknowledge it or not, they're taking a formerly competitive market and owning it through their anti-competitive practices. This plan is totally working too. They have like 
50% of the market share for this type of software. That sort of rapid adoption is completely unheard of. Take a look at this graph. It's showing the market share for automotive manufacturers during a five-year period. Tesla's been around for about 15 years. They have an unquestionably revolutionary product, and it only got them 1.1% of the market by 2019. Let's take a closer look at that. Oh, there it is. That's what a healthy market looks like. <laughs> but maybe, maybe if Tesla wanted to get into double digits, they should have just given away their cars for free. This might be cool for people in the short term, getting your free stuff, but in the long term, it's gonna eventually lead to consolidation, suppression of truly innovative ideas, and less choices for you. But it's great for Microsoft. And I think you're right, Nick, that VS Code probably won't be free forever because they're gonna hook you in, they're gonna get all this market share, and then boom, there's an annual subscription. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna starve out other companies. They're gonna starve out like Sublime Text. I don't think Microsoft needs more money. I'm just gonna throw it out there. They have $1.37 trillion. <laughs> oh my God, that's so much money. How do they have that much money? 1.37 trillion. They don't even need your attention. How much money do you think they just got sitting in the pocketbook right now? Oh, poor them. 133. Oh, was that million? Nope. The numbers are all in thousands. So that's $133 billion in straight up cash. Think about how weird that is. <laughs> it's like a little, make it relative. It's a little weird. They could throw a team of, let's say, I don't know, let's make the number humongous, 100 people, and they're each making $250,000 a year, would cost them $25 million a year. They could do that for how many years based on a $133 billion cash reserve? 5,320 years. <laughs> they, could, they could float that product for 5,320 years without charging a dime for it. That seems reasonable. So what does that what does that runway put them out to? 7,340 AD. Yeah, sure. Okay. Real fair. That seems real fair. <laughs> you imagine pitching that to somebody? Like, we got a 5,000 year runway. Why don't you come work for us? They're not a baby company. Microsoft's got 100,000 people on staff or something. 151,000 employees. It's like bigger than well, a lot of cities. You know, VS Code is open source, right? Look. I'm not anti-open source. There's a lot of amazing community managed things out there. They don't disturb me. What disturbs me is the massive corps that are investing in marketing and inevitably profiting from running open source projects. Considering the history of some of these companies, you should be disturbed too. How in the world are your shareholders okay with you throwing money into a profitless pit called free developer tools. They're not. You'll sell it to them somehow. You're justifying it because you have some hidden way of making money that we haven't figured out yet. Maybe you starve the market and charge whatever you want. Maybe you collect telemetry and sell it. Maybe you create some sort of vendor lock-in ecosystem. Who knows? But it's clear you have a plan to make money here. Or your shareholders would have the right to sue you. Again, I'm not anti-open source. I'm anti whatever the hell Microsoft is doing with VS Code and calling it open source. At my core, I'm just really pro innovation and a fair market ensures that innovation takes place. Imagine this fair market where there's a bunch of companies all competing for customers on a level playing field. New companies are emerging and there's healthy competition. But when an entire product sector gets completely devalued by a juggernaut big dick play from an infinite money company, it makes it nearly impossible to compete and innovate without massive heaps of investment capital. This unfair market means less people will be starting new businesses. People that do start new businesses will have a much harder time succeeding. The two of these graphs together show an unquestionable reduction in the number of new businesses and a massive decline in their ability to create jobs. The world is unquestionably a better place with diversity. Diversity exists in fair markets because in a fair market, companies actually charge money for their products and they don't fear some massive corp cratering that market by charging nothing. Diversity can be threatened 
when just a few companies decide to put out free products, which they're currently doing, and it's completely unfair. Because once companies start doing this and see how successful it is, which they have, they will keep doing it. And guess what? It's gonna stay that way forever. We aren't the only ones that see these predatory practices as extremely damaging to a market. In 1890, Senator John Sherman got the Sherman Antitrust Act passed. The act provided wide-ranging protections for businesses and consumers by laying out guidance to help federal courts shut down companies that were doing things that could create unfair markets. And this wasn't the only law trying to wrangle anti-competitive practices and unchecked greed. Over the years, there's been quite a few attempts to reel in these practices. And we could probably make an entire video just about these laws, but for now, we'll stick with this one. Senator George Frisbee Hoare, another author of the act, said that being good at business alone was not monopolistic, but it was the use of means that made it impossible for other persons to engage in fair competition that was the major problem. We pulled this interpretation of the Sherman Antitrust Act right from the U.S. Department of Justice website. Let this sink in. Some courts have stated that it is possible for a defendant to possess monopoly power with a market share of less than 50%. These courts provide for the possibility of establishing monopoly power through non-market share evidence, such as direct evidence of an ability to raise price or exclude competitors. That last part is important. Don't do something that would exclude competitors. In other words, don't make things free. It's anti-competitive. And you know, maybe if Sherman was still alive, he could chime in. People of Microsoft, could you cease this treacherous pursuit? You're like a robber baron and act like a breed of horn-swoggling honeyfugglers hell-bent on bullying the markets. I cannot fathom what universe exists where you could openly offer anything of economic value for free. These massive corps dominating markets with their free approach is the big deal. Good luck if you're wanting to build web font delivery systems, version control, text editors, or email. These are just a few of the domains where you shouldn't even bother competing. Unless you can get massive resources like some folks are doing in the email market and you're willing to try to break the blockade of free and take down an entrenched juggernaut that can bring billions of dollars to the table to compete. The big guys will keep spreading the unfair pricing practice into more and more and more sectors until they come after the one you're working in. It will happen. And the world will end up like this in a technological ice age where massive corps own a majority of the markets and innovation is frozen. So if you agree that we need to do something, hit that like button. If you think you know what we need to do, leave a comment. If you think I'm wrong, let's talk about it on Twitter.